Regional Crime and Justice Research Institute. Uh, the worldwide is quarter is in Italy, my hometown in Torino, and then uh, Unicree stands uh, as also some location in, in Africa, and the US, of course, and in Rome. I was supposed to give this talk also with Maya, and you know, you know he had left, and with Elisa. I'm so sorry that she's not here because she's a psychologist. I'm not. I'm an hacker. So I will try my best to also to explain her parts, the, the parts that she was supposed to explain you. What is UNICRI? It's an agency of the UN established back in 1968. The goal, we are the UN, so we don't represent any kind of, go of government. We want to help the governments and the countries in order to prevent the crime and uh, help in the criminal justice. Uh, at Un at, at UNICRI, we carried out applied research, we do some trainings for the law enforcement, we have a lot of technical cooperation, and our goal is to disseminate, to teach, to explain, and to help. Uh, I belong to a strange uh, department, the Counter Human tra Trafficking and Emerging Crimes Unit. Of course, I don't deal with uh, human tra trafficking at all, even if all the time that I show my UN business card, the, the girls say, wow, human trafficking, that's so cool, it's like in the movie. Yes, it is. But uh, I belong to the emerging crimes, so cyber crimes, counterfeiting, uh, and all the things you are able to read there. But HPP started originally as an ISECOM project, so now it's a co-joint project carried out both by the UN and uh, ISECOM. I hope you know ISECOM. We started back in 2002, before we were known as the IDEA hamster over there on the top. We are a non-profit organization and the HQ is in Spain and in New York. This is good because I don't like to see all the times that we talk about security, the, the, the US, the American, that teach to us. I think that the European v v vision approach, mood, loves, changes so, so much from the US. So I think it's important that we have the HQ in uh, e e Europe. We are an open source com com community, registered OSI, and whatever. So we are the author of the OSDEM, OSS TMM, Open Source Security Testing Methodology Manual. And we certify the people with the OPST, OPSA, and OPSC security certifications. Now, why we decided to start HPP four years ago? Because of cybercrime. All the times I heard about, uh, to, to, uh, to talk about cybercrime, there is always something wrong. Uh, they generalize too much the term uh, cybercrime. The, cyb the cybercrime word itself doesn't mean so much. It's cyber and crime. Uh, but we have identified at least three issues. A decrease of the w w window of, expo of, of exposure. I, know, I think that all of you, you know what I mean. So if years ago a vulnerability, a vulnerability wo was in the wild, it stayed in the wild for a long time. Now it's not anymore in this way. We are talking about old days, we're ta talking about actions in order to, to buy your days, to buy exploits. I got some friends that they choose as a life to sell exploits to the governments and whatever. It's not a secret that the, the US government is buying exploits. Uh, the Ch China government is helping the Chinese guy in order to attack and to do these kind of things. Then, issue number two, dangerous synergies between who? Those guys that are really technical, advanced, they are skilled, and the cl classic criminality and the terrorism as well. Terrorists are starting to realize, as there, there was, uh, there, as uh, Fitz Gerald show, show with us in the previous talk, that IT and that can may help them a lot. Then, point number three, there is an increasing de dependence between the so-called Homeland Security, uh, the TLC, the Fundamental S S S S S Services for a Country, and the ICT security issues. Nevertheless, all the times that I heard about sub 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 dime phenomenon, I, I see mistakes, I do identify mistakes, and the analysis is mainly carried out in a wrong manner. I will explain you why. Now, let's think about hackers. Uh, the, the term hackers, as you know, started around the 80s. 
we had the first movie war uh, war games that that is still nowadays my fav favorite one about hackers because it's true the things that are shown in war games are true hacking the, we had the word dialing we have uh, password guessing and so on and if you think think about still still today after 20 years or so the same attack paths still works uh, but then in the 90s the mainstream and the mass media they started to use hackers for everything everything that was an IT crime wa war was carried out by hackers but I think that also in the audience here we have hackers but you you may be ethical hackers as I am you may be a security researcher or you may be a bad guy so just a script kiddie or whatever so the media was using the term hackers for everything for f from the most stupid attacks until the most high and elite stu stuff uh, so for the mass no matter if we're talking about the lemmers the school kiddos they're the true industrial spy the hobby stackers for them we are all the same i don't feel like a square kiddo thanks god and uh, then from a business point of view because your job, I, I hope, and I think is IT security. So all the times that I ask to my customers, okay, you are scared, you need up and test, you are asking for some consulting, but who is scaring you? A 15 year, years old kid or a four, four, 40 years old professional spy or what? They are not able to answer. They are ju just able to answer you. I'm scared by hackers. So we thought and we decided that hackers isn't enough to resume a world so complex, and we started to go in details. We begin our research by an analysis, and the analysis, the result of the analysis is that hackers is still a very blurred image. In the past, hacking was an emerging phenomenon. Uh, the people didn't know at all about hackers. Uh, I, re I remember when I was trying to explain to my, I'm 35 years old now, I started to act when I was 13 in 86. I was trying to explain to my parents what the hell I was doing all the night at the PC. Hacking, hackers, and they didn't understand it at all. Now, to 20 years after, I think that if you go back to your house and you, and you tell to your ma, I'm an hacker, at least she will know the word hacker and the term hacker because of the media. And uh, the most important thing is that the researchers, the criminal researchers that they want to teach us uh, house life, they ignored the hacking phenomenon for years. Today, we have seen all around the internet and the books, there have been some researchers carried, up, carried out about hackers, but as I stayed there, they, they were in mono and not in stereo. I mean, for all of them, for all of the criminal researchers, there is only one type of hacker, ugly, thin, or fat, bad, bad smelling, and, and so on. I don't feel a top model, but I'm not, not so ugly. I have some kilos more, but okay. I don't feel to be asocial. I got ethics. I'm not anarchist. Well, it depends. Uh, but <laughs> this is the standard cliche and image of the hackers. We are nerd. We are unable to pick up girls. We don't have any kind of a so social life and so on. Of course, it's wrong. Tomorrow, tomorrow, and HPP to us is the future. We really believe that matching together the criminology research and the information security will bring to the identification of uh, the different typologies of hackers. And that's what, what we did. So our goals have been to analyze the hacking phenomenon in many aspects because the mistake that we've seen uh, to give, give you the idea, in Italy there is um, a website where a criminal researcher uh, inter is trying to interview hackers. Uh, this, criminal, this professor is also w w working for the Italian police. Do you expect that an hacker will ever trust you and fill in a questionnaire if you are from the cops? No way at all. Uh, another issue, all the times when uh, this research has been carried out, they give us as mandatory that every hacker is a criminal. That's wrong, that's not true. Hackers are not criminals by, by default. Into the hackers community, there may be also some criminals, or in the criminal environments, there may be some bad guys that decided to use the IT and the skills in order to commit a crime. So we wanted to 
understand why hackers do their stuff, the mo motivations on the back. We wanted to observe the true cardiminal actions and not the no, not cardiminal action. Of course, we are profilers. I mean, I build profiles as a job. Also, so we started from the gold rule, the 4W, who, where, when, and why. And then we went, our final goal is to acquire, to awareness, and disseminate all of our results. These are the eight phases of HPP that has begun in 2004. Uh, phase one, theo theo theoretical collection, I will zoom a lot on this. We have been able to build a questionnaire, actually it's more, but, but I will go into deta the details. The questionnaire is freely available online. Uh, it takes a long time to be filled in, so it's not the stupid questionnaire. And we decided to, de to do it this way also to avoid the kids and the script kiddos or whatever, just to make, make, make us uh, lose in time. Until now, we have been able to collect more than 500 questionnaires from all over the world. The questionnaires are built in eight languages. We got Italian, English, French, or Romanian. It's in Russian, it's in Albanian, and French, and whatever. Uh, but the questionnaire in all this kind of research is the final goal. We, d we decided the questionnaire to be only the beginning, and I will explain you why. Phase two is from September 2004 that me and the UN, we go at I may say all the world's IT underground dance events because we want to observe on the field, we want to show them our results uh, and to col collect new, uh, new far dance and so on. Phase three, uh, we are building a database in order to elaborate and merge and classify all the outputs that we got from one and two. Then, num num number four, I'm talking with Lance Spaisner from the Oninet project in order to build a new kind of Oninet, a new generation of Oninet. What, what we want to do is to replicate true companies, banks, government, and whatever websites, in order to see, how can I explain you? At the Oninet project, they care about how you act the target. We don't care so much about the how, but about the why and who. So this will be a very important, important phase. On phase five, we will do a gap an analysis, merging together everything we got from the theoretical aspects and from the field to mesh them together. Then we will have a life assessment of, of the profiles, a, fi a final profiling, and then all the methodology will be available for free as an open source project under the FDL license bought by ASICOM and the UN. These are where we are. We are on phase three. As you see, the time is long, and here is what we still have to do. I've wrote the hardest pace because to build this database, we are getting crazy. I don't, I don't know if some from the audience remember a fantastic book from the 80s that is called The Cuckoo's Egg. The Cuckoo's Egg is a book where the, the author is a true, true story, and the author analyzes and explains uh, uh, when in the 80s he received the uh, IT attacks uh, from, uh, from two members of the CCC in G G Germany, from Pengo and Agbard. Agbard was found uh, fired and uh, in this way into a tree, uh, tree three years after. Uh, we are tol talking about two hackers from the CCC that were hired by the KGB in order to hack and attack the uh, uh, United States military and gov government uh, IT systems. This is a true tale, so I just don't understand why all the times that I'm mentioning terror the terrorist or so on, people don't believe me because it happened already 20 years ago in the 80s, so why it should not happen now? I was talking to you about the book because if you ever did the book there is a, a part where from the password that one of the hackers has chosen in a system he hacked uh, the author has been able to realize that the attackers were not from the US but from e e e Europe. Why? Because uh, Agbard he chose as a password uh, a brand of uh, tobacco that is only sold uh, in EU and not out in the US. The attacks, the time zone of the attacks and many other Small, small inputs helped him in order to track a profile of the attacker and then to de identify them. We are going to do the same thing in this database. The database will have fields like 
the difficulty of the attack, the attack vector, the motivations. But we also analyze, we will analyze in the honey nets everything that they will type. We will, of course, l l log them the when they will go on IRC and whatever because we need to build the profile. We don't care that they are committing a crime. The honeyness will, will be there for that. So we really don't, don't care about the law issues. There will be no law issues, but we, we need to understand them, to see them, to breath them. Uh, the funniest phase, in fact, will be phase four, the honeyness. Then I have to done because it's so long. I, I decided to brought you so many things. So our ne ne next goal will be the delivery of the, of the database and, the, and the, of the HoneyNet. As I, sold, as I told you, the project is open -end. So we need the volunteers when, when it's sponsors and whatever. Our main challenge will be to identify, evaluate the techniques and the attacks tool in order to correlate them in the, in the database to correlate and identify all the partners and then as I told you when uh, go out on the market on the free market and, and on the open source community with the release 1.0. I was tel telling you about the questionnaires. Until now we have two kind of questionnaires, the full one and the compact one. Why? In order to fill in the full one you need from three to four hours. It's long, it's not a joke. So we decided to create also a compact one that may need from an hour and a half, fr from an hour to an hour and a half to, to be f f f filled in. We spread it in three ways. Very, very verified ones. It means uh, I know the guys to who I'm asking to fill in the questionnaire because we met in uh, the events because they are my friends or colleagues or belongs to community and so on. So in this case, we give to them the, f the, full, v the full release and the quality of the questionnaire is really high. Num number two, in the underground world is the compact one and in this case the QOQ will, will be average medium. And then we will, we haven't started to do, do it, we will into specialized ma magazines such as Eki9 and whatever and the people will be able to have the link and go online and fill, fill it in but we know that in this case the quality will be so low. Uh, what we ask? First of all everything we ask is anonymous. We don't even ask them for their nickname. I think that a na nickname for an hacker is a paradigm thing. I've seen other questionnaires where the first qu question was which, which is your nickname, your alias. That's wrong and it shows us that the researchers, they don't know the hacking word. We have module A, B and C. So A, as for every questionnaire, we ask you if you are male or female, we ask for your age. We want to get, get an idea of your everyday life, who you are. In B, we upon many questions about the relationship that the actor has with the authorities, with the teacher at school, their employees, their colleagues, their friends, and so on. So it's more a zoom on the so social aspects of the actors. Model C is the technical one and the cr criminological one. So we ask uh, we, which kind of target do you prefer to act? Uh, do you act on X25 or voice over IP and blah, and blah, blah, blah. So everything to zoom on the th technical aspects. These are some uh, examples, which is your sex, your age, your title of study. This is from the section D, section C, and so on. Uh, this is, for example, from module C, uh, the th technical part is only one of the many qu questions we ask to them. And I decided also to bring you some answers because we are, we are really amazed by, by the answers from time to time. Uh, I prefer to comment these other two. I know who answered this one because I asked uh, to this to this target to answer us. Uh, how do you perceive your hacking or freaking activity, legal or illegal? And the answer is, I don't accept the terms legal and illegal. First comment. Accepting this term means that I have the same point of view as people who have nothing in common with me. That's fantastic. Okay, I'll try to be more specific to help you with this questionnaire. So, in our mind, she's helping us. To me, my activities are legal to the others, they are illegal. Now, apart from the point that I knew or that she was a girl, 
but from this answer we can understand that the behavior of this person is uh, she prefers to attack and not to defend so she, pre she prefers to talk and not to shut up she's not English ma ma mother tongue because there are some mistakes in the text so you you may understand how many things you may we may be able to collect from every answer and that's why in, or, in order to analyze every questionnaire it took it takes us from three to five five days each one is not so quick we received a grand total of 1073 questionnaires from all over the world but uh, many participants choose to not to answer to all the questions for example we we have questions about alcohol the drugs and other stuff some some of them accepted to answer other they didn't so the total number of the questionnaire fully filled is 500 at, at September of 2006 uh, these are these these are the countries from where mainly we got the answers but we got answers also from uh, the ne 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 Nepal from a small uh, from a small island in the Pacific Sea and so on it's amazing uh, but I want to comment the questionnaires as I was tell telling you all the researchers similar to us had the, the questionnaire as a starting point and a final point. To us, it's only the beginning. So, of course, we don't uh, rely only on the questionnaires. The questionnaire is a part for us. So, phase one and two are a kind of, re of a requirement in order to do more. And a, and a nice comment is that uh, in, all, in all the questionnaires at the end, we have a free field, a free text field for the comments or whatever. Okay, we received also some insults, but 99, 90 95% of the answer of the comments and so on were in order to to tell us that we we were doing a good thing and the underground community is really happy about our job, our research. We have been also able to produce a book in Italian until now. It, it will uh, go out in English for the American market and worldwide for Taylor and Francis at the end of this year. And here, I have I have to play for five seconds the happy Italian because when when I went back to my publisher editor and I told them hey uh, from the US they are asking us for our results so it would be a good thing to translate the book they answered us do you know we always import especially when we talk about IT books and it's the first time that we are able to export and that's so so good and cool uh, what are we trying to collect from the questionnaire? The modus operandi, as for every crime scene, we have to understand how the bad, the bad guy is uh, acting. Uh, we ask things like, do you act alone or in a g group? And I will, uh, I will show you at the end all the tables and the results of the resume tables. It's an important question. We ask the mo motivations for which they do what they do. We ask uh, uh, for the targets they prefer to act. We ask for the relationship between the motivations and the target. I mean, I act a bank. Okay, are you acting a bank for money or only to go on the media or only as a challenge? It's totally three different answers. Uh, we ask about their hacking careers, if they respect, if they know and respect the ethics of the hacker, if they can crash or, or damage the systems they attack, if they perceive that what they are doing is illegal. Uh, I told you that I started to act when I was 13. I don't know if you know, all of you know my history. I've been busted in 95 for international hacking by FBI, by, by, by a long list. That's w why I still can't fly to the, uh, to the United States of America. I was a uh, 20 years old boy when, when, when they got me, and I can swear you that, okay, I knew I was acting illegally, but I didn't care at all. I didn't think that they would ever be able to bust me. And the funny thing is that in all the answers of the questionnaire, this approach is the same. No matter if you are talking about a 13 year, year, uh, years old school kiddo or a 40 years professional spy, the answers are always the same. And 
we have tried also from our questions to learn if all the laws that the, the European community is doing against hacking, they work or no. And I, I have a surprise for you at the end about this issue. Uh, these are some of the categories we have been able to spot, but I will show you shortly uh, the list. But it's interesting to see that even if the technical skill may, may be high, as for the ethical hackers, for the cyber warriors, they do hostile spies and so on, the danger cha changes because an ethical hacker would never do intentionally a damage, and so also the quiet paranoid and skilled hacker. Now I will resume to you what we have been able to find. So from the, from the 80s where hackers was, was only the term, now at least we have nine different categories of hackers. From the wannabe lemmer to the script kiddy, the decker, decker, ethical hacker, quite paranoid skilled hacker, cyber warrior, industrial spy, government agent, and military agent. Uh, we may say that the first two are amateurs. These are hobbyists and the other are professionals. Why? From here on, they do it only for money. That's why. Uh, we have tried try, try to resume the impact that they can have on the target and we, which kind of target they attack to. Of course, if you are a government agent, you will attack other governments uh, as China is doing right now. Uh, you want to spot some suspected terrorist or if you are a government agent you want to steal the know-how from uh, other governments and companies so strategic companies or individuals I've tried also to resume with with some image also to laugh a little, little bit the categories I mean showing you I don't know if you recognize this picture over there we have a 11 years old, years old boy on the, with the skateboard. So the common image of the young hacker and the skate. That was the advertisement for security by Bull. And they've written over there, you must pay atten attention because this boy will be your next n n nightmare for your company. So again, the mass medias, they are trying to abuse of hackers in order to do money. That sucks so much. The boy num number two is, R is Rafa from a Brazilian group of web defacers. Uh, I think I'm a man, so I can ju 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 judge, but I think uh, he's a nice boy. So it's not true that hackers are, all of us are ugly. That's an example. He looks a model. These guys over there, they represent the dead hackers. They were the gang of the MOD. Master of Deception back in the 90s in the United States of America. They had a fight with the LOD, Lords of Doom, and the playground of their fight has been uh, the AT&T telecommunication si system. So it happened in, uh, 90, in the night, in January of 90, that uh, all the phone calls, uh, all the telephone system from New York to, to LA, to Los Angeles, went down only because somebody from the load called the guy over there, you black nigger. So again, a two gangs of 15 years old boys in the 90s have been able to switch off all the United States, States communication system for a whole day. And this happened 15 years ago. Then what we have, me as an ethical hacker, Kevin Mitnick as the, the quite paranoid and skilled hacker, and so on. Of course, whenever we go, to the agencies, I choose this image because I love the X-Files and the, and the no-face man or the man with the cigar. And these, these are just some ideas to represent them. But let's, let's go back to us. Here we have been able to do more. So we have the definition here, let's say the profile, but we have also kind, a kind of offender ID. The minimum age and the top age for each of the offenders if they do it alone or not, the target and why they do it. Let's, le le let's take a couple as an example because, because I don't have enough time. The wannabe lemmers who are, are they really small kids from nine, nine, year, nine years old until 15 or 16 that they read on the newspaper about hackers, attacks and whatever and they want to be cool as well. So they act and they risk and they know the risk 
because at the end they really believe they w would like to be on the news, on the newspapers. So why they do, who they attack? They will attack the end user at home with, with, with an ADSL line. They, they will spot for Wi-Fi access and so on. And why they do it? Also be on, only because it's cool to boast and brag. Only for that. That is totally di different from, for example, an ethical hacker that may have from fi 15 to fi 50 years old. He does it alone or in group only for fun. He star he star his targets are the technology and the vendors. Why? Why? Because we spot the vulnerabilities over there every day, and we do it for curiosity on in in order to help outside. So you may see how the, the, the different it is from every profile. Another issue that I want to point you out: only the first two categories they hacking group. Why? You are young. You are not so skilled, so you need others in order to la launch your attacks. When you grow up or after the first bust, you learn and you prefer to do your stuff alone because you trust no one. They go back to do it in, uh, in group when they do it with other goals. Uh, here, we have trying to gather those three aspects. Do you respect the hacker ethics? Do you crash or damage the targets you hack into? And uh, do you know that your activity is illegal? It's funny again, because the most young, they even don't know about hacker ethics. Whenever I, talk, I say about hacker ethics, my ethics was, okay, I can, hack in, I, I can hack in your box, but I will not damage, I will not steal, I will not erase, I will just hack in your box in order to learn, and that's it. Uh, the young, they don't do it then anymore. No one of the hacking community, they do it anymore except for ethical hackers. Do you crash or, down or damage? Again, in function of the profile, it may be a no or a yes. It depends, again, and everything is just lined over there. This is funny. All the new laws about against hacking. Uh, I've tried to speak with the judges, with the cops, and to explain them, hey, do you see? No one cares about the laws. We know there are laws, but we just don't care. Uh, I tell you more. When some of your hacker's friend is busted and he goes in jail, do you stop to hack? I mean, is there a de deterrence effect for that? No at all. Uh, if they bust you after, will you continue to hacking or no? Uh, only two said, uh, uh, no, okay, I stop. And these are the youngest one, the kiddos, because it's not so nice to find the cops in your, uh, at your home when, when you are 15 or, or 16 years old and you have to explain to your parents what the hell is happening. And the ethical hackers, as me, uh, I was, I knew that I had some high skills, but after the arrest and all the mess, I ju just decided that the game was over and it was m m much better to find into hacking my, my life, my approach, my work, and my hobbies and my passions as well. Then, in all the serious researches, they have the pies, so we decided to bring you the hack pies. Hack pies, in this case, is about the sex. Uh, a common cliche about hackers and, and, and the IT security is that there are no girls. That, that's false. There are not a lot, okay, only 6%, but if we compare to 10 years ago, the percentage of the girls in the hacking machine was like 1% or even less. Now it's uh, since, I may say, five years or six that I happen to say security events around the world, and I always see more and more girls around, and that, that, uh, that's, of course, good. Then we ask them, uh, we try to spot the age. Uh, we've been amazed to see that the highest percentage, the 30% of hackers, are from 10 to 20 year, years old. So this means that the generation is changing really so much. And then we have uh, from 21 to 25 year, years old, from 26 to 30, and so on. 
There are also all deckers. Four, four, 14 are older than 45 years old. Why? Because all of us, we get older. That's normal. And probably there are some guys that they decided to keep and to stay in the hacking environment, even if they're old. Then, we wanted to learn at which age they started to hack. And again, as, as I was telling you, as it happened to me, from 10 to 15 year, years old is kind of the, ma the main age when you start to hack. I would, would like also to hear your co comments and answers if you think that we are correct or not. Then we wanted to learn uh, if they card. Why? Because carding is, I may say, the only hacking te technique that is criminal. The, you, you don't ne need any, any skills in order to card. There is anything ethical in carding. It's a true criminal action. You card in order to steal or money or goods. We decided to, to ask they, they, this because for us, if you haven't carded never in your life, you, I may never say that you are a criminal. Otherwise, if you did, in my, my opinion, there is something criminal in your blood, by, by, by the way. Where do you live? You may w w wonder why, because uh, another cliche from the 80s and the 90s is that hackers, they only live in big towns uh, and me metropolis and so on. This was true in the past, but now isn't anymore true. Every, every small village can be connected via the internet, AD, ADSL and whatever. So you don't need anymore uh, to give, give you the idea. When I bought my first PC, my first home, com, home com, computer, I was 13 years old, I had to cross all the town to find the only shop that they, they used to sell the Commodore. Now we exit in the started start data and every corner you, you are able to buy everything, no matter if you live in India, Australia, EU or whatever. So the gap is over. In fact, uh, we still have the 45% that li lives, lives in a big town, but the 35% is from a small town and the 19% they stay in the country with the cows uh, and the grass. Then we, we asked them to describe themselves, their technical skills. And here we have been surprised because we thought that the hacker's ego is big. So all of them were the ones who are, I'm cool, I'm lit, I'm the best. No, they are true. So they say for a 32%, well, I'm average good. And then we have the experts, the high and the low. Socioeconomical status. Why? Because again, in the past, in order to buy a PC and a modem, you had to have the money. Now everything is cheap, so we wanted to learn if it's true that all the hackers, by the way, they came from an upper class family or not. And that's, it seems to be, but also no. The 43% is average high, but the 39% is average low. Uh, nowadays, in, or, in order to buy a PC, you, c you can do it with uh, $800, euros or whatever. So you don't need any more to come from a rich family in order to play with IT. The studies. Uh, all the media, they describe hackers are smart guys, intelligent guys, and so clever. Thank you. But we wanted to see to check if it was true that all the hackers, they go to university. Of course, the percentage is high, but, but it's not so high. So this means that you can be an hacker even if you don't know, if you haven't uh, attended to any university class. Also, if you, are, if you, you, own, uh, you hold only the secondary school or the, pr the primary school even. This is the, the pie I love more. We asked to these 500 hackers, s s select on your own a word or more that may be able to describe you at the best. Of course, c 
crime is our curiosity, curiosity is our crime, so the curiosity is, is at first place. All the hackers, mo most of them, they answer, I'm curious, but they said also, I'm happy, I'm lazy, I'm healthy, uh, I'm paranoid, that's good. I'm uh, a manipulator, I'm ingenuous, I'm depressed, I'm extroverted, I'm satisfied, and whatever. Uh, my opinion is that if we ask the same thing, not to hackers, but to the standard people, they would just answer in the same way. We are not hackers, we are human beings. That's it. How much time I have? Okay. I wanted to comment to you this one and I will run on the end. Uh, the pro probability that an hacker will start to talk and cooperate with the cr cr criminals and then the criminals will go with the true spies and from the true spies go to the very bad guys so the potential damage is higher already happened so we don't have to wo worry anymore and do you know why i love this picture so much have a look there 97 these guys in 97 have been able to predict something that then happened but I have to run. So I don't think that the attackers are the terrorists at all. We, we haven't had ye yet a cyber attack on a country, but we have the China's example and the Estonia example. So we should rethink about the fact that extremists, uh, they are not skilled. They are beginning to, to skill them themselves. And I love also the history. So. All the times that I talk to governative agents, especially from the United States of America, they told me, oh, Arabs are too much ignorant and they will never be able to launch a cyber attack on the United States of America. Ah, yeah? Do you know that the first PC virus has been dot in Pakistan in 86? So again, if in, if in 86 they've been able to do this, I wonder myself what they may be able to do now. Conclusions. I hope it's clear to you that the hacking world has not always been linked to criminal actions. As I told you, they, they, they have been some research, but the research haven't been able to describe such a complex and in continuous evolution world. We think, we, we believe that it's possible to apply um, a part of profiling methodology for hackers, but we, we really have to, ma to marry together, to match together the th technical view, the social view, the psycho view, and the criminological view. Uh, as I told you, HPP is open to everybody that would like to help you. You can, you can help us uh, filling us the questionnaire or mm, joining our research team. Uh, a final consideration because it's important. Even if we are U UN, we don't have the money. Don't laugh, it's true. So we self-funded ourselves. We self-funded, it means that all the research I, I show with you to, today has been carried out in the last five years on the Friday evening and in the weekends because they don't pay our office time for this kind of researchers. Uh, we had so many pr 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 problems and issues, but it's four years that we go on. Uh, everything at the end will be gave us a present to the international community under GNU and FDL. We really think that we are building something that is nice, that is beautiful, that didn't exist, and it seems also to work. So why not? I will send the slides to, to, the, um, to Confidence, so if you would like to browse through our biography, everything is here. I have to say thanks to all, the, all these guys, events, and whatever that are helping us. Uh, say, thanks uh, so much time. Thank, thanks also to Confidence, to Andre uh, and Anna. And uh, I hope you enjoyed my talk. If you want to email me or my co-researcher, Macy Stefania, feel free to do it. And uh, uh, if you want to know more about HPP, isaacom.org slash, slash H HPP. If you want to fill in the questionnaire, hpp.recursiva.org. That may be down from time to time because uh, uh, we, are, we are homemade. We do, do it for free, so from time, from, time, from time to time, the web server may be or down or up. Thank you for your...
time zone. I don't know if we have the, the time for the Kuwa no, qu questions, I guess. No, I'm sorry, Raul. If you have any kind of qu questions, offer me a beer at the bar, and I will be happy to answer you. Thank you.